welcome to today's graphic design tip of the day. For today's tip, we're going into Adobe Dimension to learn how to create a three-dimensional model after you create a label or a logo, something that you're going to add on to it. So starting out, I am bringing you into Adobe Stock. I searched for 3D models and specifically typed in ice cream in my search for my example here. You do wanna look for items that say free next to them, otherwise it will ask you to purchase it. I've already downloaded um, this container, so I'm also going to download this ice cream. When you click on the items, you can go to license for free. Just make sure you're signed into your Adobe account. If you don't have one, you can make one very easily. And when I show this item that downloads in the finder, it's going to be a zip file. So to unlock it, just double click. And you can then see the contents of your folder here. It should have an object file. Um, that's going to be the one that we're gonna open up in Adobe Dimension. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that to the side for right now. If you can't find what you're looking for in Adobe Stock, um, especially for free, there's also a website uh, that's called TurboSquid that if you search for the price of free, and your format as an object file again. You can find a lot of free items um, that might be able to work out as well to search your keywords up here at the top. All right, um, so before we start in Adobe Dimension, just really quickly, if you have a file that you created in Adobe Illustrator, if you go to File and down to Export and over to Export As, make sure you save it as a PNG file. It's going to turn the background into a transparent file as long as you have nothing back there. Uh, so when I add it on to anything for my three-dimensional model, you're not gonna see anything within that space. So um, it'll just be the logo itself. Save that as whatever you like to call it, but make sure it's a PNG file. Now in Adobe Dimension, uh, you can drag and drop items into your scene from all of these free models that they have here. It's pretty um, simple and not a lot of tools to work with, so pretty easy to use. But before we do that, we want to make sure our resolution of our document is set to 250. It's going to make a nice clear render when you are done. Now if there isn't a three-dimensional model here that you'd like to use, um, like we just downloaded, you can import your models. Go to File, Import, and 3D Model. And then you can find your item that you downloaded. So I'm going for the object file that I just mentioned and click Open. Using the regular selection tool, the arrow key, I can move this around my space using those arrows that are provided. If I need to make my object bigger, I can hold down the Shift key on my keyboard and stretch from any of these three points on the outside, just right around the arrow keys that are there. And if I wanted to rotate my object, I can use any of the orbit tools here. Um, if you wanted to orbit the whole scene, you can also do that with the orbit tool so I can rotate my camera angle to whatever angle I'd like to actually snap this picture. I can also move the scene up and down to kind of change my camera perspective and get it to the right angle that I want. And I can drop the whole background backwards and forwards, kind of zooming in or zooming out to get that correct perspective for my object. Now, how do I add a label onto this item? It's really simple. You can just drag and drop right from your desktop. Uh, but before I do that, I just want to take a look over here at my layers palette. Most of these objects, especially the ones from the Adobe Stock Store, are going to come with multiple pieces. Uh, like here is the cap and here is the base of my container. You can change these separately to different materials, textures. So just with the cap selected here, just as an example, if I go to my materials, which is the second tab over here on Adobe Dimension, I can find um, a different material that I might want just for the cap and drag and drop it over to my item. So you can change that at any time. You can also target specifically the base. So if I want it to be a different type of material, I can drag and drop that over, but maybe the color isn't going to be what I wanted for my model. Um, you can also see that it gives you the option of the base color here, and I would be able to play around with whatever color I would want that to be as well. Or you can copy and paste one from your logo um, using the color code, of course. If you wanted to place your object on a plane, you can also add in a plane in the bottom of the screen here and you'd be able to give it a material as well. Maybe I want it to be on this kind of wood texture. And again, just like I showed you before, you can move, you can stretch, and kind of make this a base or table for your object.
All right, let's go ahead and grab that label then. Um, here I have my PNG, and again, just drag and drop it right on top of your model, super easy. And it's automatically going to form to fit onto that model. You can see that I can rotate it wherever I want it to be. I can also use the shift key and stretching from those points to make it bigger or smaller. And there I have um, a completed design. If I wanted to change the lighting or anything specific, you can also go over to your actions for your environment um, to intensify the light or tone it down if it's too bright, or maybe it's shining a little bit too bright on something that you want um, to be able to see very well. You can change that rotation there. You can also play with the shadows and the reflection. Um, so all that fun stuff right there to give it a very specific lighting effect. They also have different types of lighting that you can add in simply by dragging and dropping them into your environment to kind of change the mood of your scene that you're creating. And then finally, they have background images. I would highly recommend finding your own image unless you're using a simple gradient because there's only about five of them here and everybody who's used a dimension has seen these now. So unless it's a simple gradient that you're adding in in your background, I would definitely recommend finding your own images and dragging them into the scene to be able to add those as your background space. When you are done um, completely and you want to take a picture of this to add into your design that you're creating, go up to render. Make sure that you give it a title. Change it to high and slow if it's not there already and a Photoshop document is perfect and I'm saving mine to my desktop, make sure you pay attention where yours is saving to just in case so you don't end up losing it after it renders. And we'll click render. This is gonna take a little bit to go through the process, but it will show you a preview here of the rendering. So if at any point you decide, I don't like what it's looking like, you can always go back to design, fix it up, and then go back to your render again to do this all over again. When it's done, it'll save as a Photoshop file. So you can open it right in Photoshop or even right in Illustrator and go forward with your design of wherever you want to put this now photographic image that is super realistic and ready to go for your graphic design. I hope you enjoyed today's graphic design tip of the day. Here is the final design.